I want to thank God for this wonderful opportunity he has given uh, me to, to stand before you and thank you Canon for, for the chance that you, you have uh, given me to bring the word of God today. It's a wonderful day, the day that uh, uh, we are seeing the real service in church when Mother's Union and Karma are being uh, received. Is it not wonderful? It is a wonderful, wonderful thing. Um, yeah, we are well. It has been not a very long time, but it's quite some time. Praise God. And we really want to thank God. Um, the reading that the readings uh, for the lectionary today, one of them is Matthew 14 and verse number 13. Matthew 14 verse 13 to 21. That's one of the lectionary readings, and it is about uh, Jesus feeding uh, 5,000 people, 5,000 men. Uh, yeah, it, it looks so uh, um, simple or common. It looks a very common uh, reading or passage because I'm very sure most of us had this story or this miracle of Jesus feeding 5,000 men even from Sunday school, isn't it? Most of us had this from Sunday school. And so it looks so, so simple. And it reminded me of uh, some teacher. Uh, whenever he went to teach uh, a certain class, maybe a subject like mathematics, and uh, this teacher, akianza he topic, kuna wanafuzi wanaona ahi o topics mimi najua. Sasa, they will not be attentive. They will say, ah, that one I know. So the teacher will just uh, uh, talk and talk and talk and probably talking, uh, you know, because that topic I know. So these are some of the topics like that, that a preacher may just talk and talk and just talking their own things because the students already know. Isn't it? Just look at me, everyone. I think you all know this topic, Amma. So I think it's a very simple topic today, and I was just wondering, what do I do? I almost escaped it. But you know, it's in the lectionary, and sometimes um, we want to go by the lectionary. Jesus feeding 5,000. If I look from this end to this end, I am already seeing the people who are already saying, ah, that one I know. Ah, that one I know. I think we should just pass quickly and go home. And that's what I will do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is what exactly I will do. I'll pass quickly because we know it. But let me tell you something. You know the song that we have just read, I mean sung, is a very good song. It says, break thou the bread of life, dear Lord, to me. As thou didst break the loaves beside the sea. Which loaves are they? Is it not this passage that Jesus broke where? Beside the sea of Galilee. And so why am I bringing this? To tell us how important this passage is. Because again, this passage or this, this miracle is recorded in all the four Gospels. Not all miracles are recorded in all the four Gospels, but this one is recorded. And not just recorded, there are uh, two Gospel writers, Matthew and Mark, records this miracle twice, with some little variation. In one instance, Matthew says, Jesus fed 4,000. Another time he says, Jesus fed 5,000. Mark the same. To mean that this uh, passage is recorded in the Gospels six times. Is it not important? You know, I'm justifying my standing here with this thing here. 
I think it is important, isn't it? Is that not proper justification? Now I have the confidence. If we look at the readings before, uh, especially Matthew, Matthew 14, before that, uh, there are parables and parables and uh, Jesus is talking about the parable of this and the parable of that. And most of the time he says, the kingdom of heaven is like, and then he goes ahead. The kingdom of heaven is like a woman baking bread. The kingdom of God is like, you know, the mustard seed. The kingdom of God is like, and it continues like that. But then, um, there is a, a, a whole turn of event. Now, it's not, it's not a parable, but it is miracle. Parables have hidden meaning. They may be plain, but there is a hidden what? Hidden meaning inside. For example, if you say, a woman baking bread, who does not bake bread? Of course, bread, like if you come to my house, we don't bake bread, but we do chapatis. That is also bread, isn't it? Isn't it? Or we do what we call now look at the person next to you. I want to, I want to mention that. Just look at the person next to you. Something we call kuon. Kuon means ugali. Na siyo ile ugali ya kukula na kijiko. Ni ugali ya kufanya nini? Ya kufanya nini? Bas, liyo hiyo. That is also bread in other places, isn't it? So we all do that. So when the Bible says, the, the kingdom of God is like a woman baking bread. That's something that all of us know, isn't it? But there is something hidden later. Even miracles. Miracles, why, why does it become a miracle? For example, feeding 5,000. Feeding 5,000 is not a miracle. Because you can feed them, isn't it? You can feed them, isn't it? You can feed 5,000. But the miracle here is, Feeding them with what? Just five loaves and two fish. That is the miracle. That is the miracle. Walking on water is not a miracle. I mean, walking is not a miracle. The miracle is walking on water. Because it defies the laws of nature. The laws of nature is, and those who are physicists will tell you that uh, you cannot walk on water. Actually, ukikanyaga hivi, Eh? So when I, you know, we normally say like this. I didn't want to say it, but let's, let me say. We say a body displaces its own weight. So I am very weighty, is it? So when I can the water, what happens? I will displace the same weight. So definitely I will see, sink. But Jesus defies that. So he walks on water. Akikanyaga, he will not sink. Kweli? And many more, like turning water into wine. I mean, the chemistry there. How, how, does it, how does it happen? So what makes it a miracle is that uh, naturally, water cannot be turned to wine unless some chemical processes take place, isn't it? Isn't it? So miracles and parables probably uh, they may give us uh, some end, there is something hidden that Jesus wants his disciples or whoever he is giving this to learn. And one of the miracles we just saw when Mwangi came here, the Mwangis, they came here and the child was, you know, had a skin problem, lost the skin, and within one week, the skin came back. Isn't it? Isn't it? Is that not a miracle? What else do we want to see? That's a miracle, isn't it? So let's go back to our story. Let's go back to our story. The underlying part here is that in all the gospel stories or the gospel passages, Jesus feeding 5,000, is that there is a hungry, uh, I mean, people have gathered. They have gathered in a a deserted place, in a far place, a place which is not like Nairobi City. It's, it's not a place like that your village 
town. No, it's totally deserted. And the, the crowd is hungry. The crowd is the crowd is hungry. Today it's like most of the readings are talking about food. So we'll talk about food. The crowd, Jesus and his disciples are having a hungry crowd. More than 5,000, because 5,000 were men. And it seems like these people were not prepared. Nobody, nobody was prepared except that little boy who had five loaves and uh, two fish. The rest were not prepared. And so everyone is hungry and the disciples turn to Jesus and tell Jesus, why don't you send these people away so that they find for themselves food? Because it was getting late. They had listened to Jesus and they were so patient. I'm not saying you are not patient, but them they were more patient than us. They were more patient than us. They were patient. They listened and it was now late. And then they were hungry. They were hungry. But when the disciples told Jesus, send these people away, Jesus did not send them away. And this is the heart of the miracle. Instead he tells them, um, he tells them, you give them something to eat. I will not read, but the passage was read to us so, so well. He says in verse 16, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. That is uh, Matthew 14, verse 16. Yes, Jesus replied, they do, not, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. And that is the that is the heart of the miracle. Please stand to the person next to you and tell him or her, give them something to eat. Yes, give them something to eat. That is the heart of the miracle. A hungry crowd and this hunger, like today, Jesus was speaking then, but he's also speaking to us today, that there's a hungry crowd. People are hungry. And he tells, he turns to you and says, give them something to eat. The hunger is spiritual, the hunger is physical, and the hunger may be many other aspects. Praise God. We have a hungry world. People are hungry. People are thirsty. These people want something. Maybe, they, maybe one or two people may understand what we are saying. For example, when Shemua here, when he is out there, People come, you know, people know that the Mweshimua should give, isn't it? Isn't it? So, they come and they're hungry. And you, and you cannot send them away. Can you send them away? Jesus could not send these people away. Hungry crowd. The people are hungry. But there was a small boy who had five loaves and two fish. He did not say, oh, this is too little. This is too little. So I'll not give it. Instead, he gave it. Isn't it? Isn't it? Most of us, a situation like that, you'd say, oh, no, this is too little. Because even the disciples had started saying, there is a, a little boy here with five loaves and two fish, but how far can it take us? They had started, isn't it? How far can it take it? And I think that's a good reasoning. That's a good reasoning. Anybody who reasons well will tell you, how far can it take us? These people should just go home, isn't it? By the way, how far can five loaves and two fish take us? And this is where sometimes science fails. Please, if you are scientific here, shun it for a moment. Because how, how, how will you divide it? How will you divide it? You will divide and subdivide and subdivide and divide and, until you have, we normally say, 
the smallest is an atom or a molecule. Which is the smallest? An atom. But an atom. So, so each person to get an atom, an atom, or a molecule, a molecule. I mean, how far can it take us? That is the question. But Jesus insists, give them something to eat. Give them something to eat. There's a hungry world out there, and it is our responsibility, our duty to feed them. It is our responsibility and our duty to do what? To feed them. And although it may look like we don't have enough, it may look like there's no enough, enough bread to go around. But the miracle we recount today teaches us that there is enough for every living being. Praise God. There is enough. Can I tell you the only difference? The only difference is how we divide it. How we divide it up. That's the only difference. Otherwise there is enough. There is enough. But how do we divide it up? And that's why we have some going hungry and others having some things to throw, isn't it? Isn't it? Why? How we divide it up. Now, this is a very serious one. You can ask somebody, how do you divide yours? How do you usually divide yours? There is somebody um, who used to give her daughter school fees to go and pay. So he gives the daughter school fees, so the daughter goes and pays, but then at the end of, uh, before the end of the term, he finds a message that there is a fee balance. But he, he, he gave all the fee, a fee balance. Another term, a fee balance. Aye. The third term, he went to school to find out what is really happening. Or you normally have another fee structure in the middle of the term. Because whatever you send me, I normally, I do pay. But how come every time I have a fee balance? Only to realize the daughter intercepted. And the daughter said, Dad, you know I have a friend who is even brighter than me. And they, and they don't have money. All the time he is a, he's sent home for fees. So what I usually do, whenever you give me the fees, I divide it. And pay some for her so that she's not sent home for fees. And again, when you pay, again, because it is those days when you are not paying fee through the bank. I remember I was being given money to take to school. Praise the Lord. So, the, uh, I mean, the father looked at the daughter and just sympathized and said, I think I have a good daughter. I have a good? So what did the father do? The father committed himself, because he was blessed, and he recognized that he was blessed. He committed himself to paying fees now for her daughter and this other child until the end of Form 4. My wife knows him. And let me tell you, that's what he did. When, when, when this child went to the university, and this other one also went to the university, but a different university, he committed himself to paying fees for, for that one also. Of course, she could get bursaries and, and, uh, and what. Let me tell you, this guy, he got sick and he died later. But do you know in my language what we would call? This one went to heaven direct because of his action. Wait, I've not told you in my language. We call it polo piach. Can you tell somebody polo piach? Meaning, heaven direct. Uyo mtu awezi branch. Uyo mtu anaenda binguni. Sinukweli. Is there another place that person can go? He cannot go anywhere because he did not hold. Instead, he gave away. Isn't it? Sometimes we are blessed, but we, we hold so we don't enjoy the blessings. Look at this, this boy. This boy... He had very little. But when he told to, uh, hey, 
he gave everything, isn't it? And do you know what happened? I want, I want, I want us to, I want to give us three, three lessons. Number one, God invites us to participate in His kingdom, to do our part. Each one of us, this boy did his part in the kingdom, isn't it? What is your part? I really love the uniform of Mothers Union and Kama. They will do their part. They have been, they have been Priscillaized. I don't know. I'm trying to get that English. But they, they are the Priscillas. Hallelujah. They are the. You know, when we were in school, after an exam, the teacher would come, and I think those teachers are not very good teachers to other other students, because they would come after an exam to return papers. Instead of just returning silently, they announce marks to everyone. They announce marks. And do you know why they announce marks? Do you know why they announce marks? So that you who is even down there, you feel bad. So that you can improve. So that you can improve. I think that announcing canon is very good. So that those who are not yet there can start working, isn't it? We should have a register, come a chair and MU. So that when you are announcing, so you announce from the one who started during Dafton's time all through until now. So that if I'm the one who has not, then I feel bad and I work hard. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do your part. Number two, trust Jesus to multiply the impact of, of, of what you share with others. What is this you share with others? Like, uh, we, we are supposed to share. This, this uh, passage, Miracle, is telling us to share. The boy shared, isn't it? God will multiply it. And it will surprise you. Praise God. It will surprise you how far it can go. The disciples asked, how far can this take us? How far can it go? Is it true that it went far? It went very far. Number three, and the last one, put God first and things will fall in place. Put God first and things will fall in place. This boy had very little uh, uh, um, bread and fish. And maybe he would have thought, if I give out, I will remain hungry. Isn't it? But... Can I surprise you? Jesus took it and lifted it up and broke it and fed everyone to their satisfaction, including the boy. Tell somebody, including the boy. The boy was also satisfied. The boy was among those who are satisfied. So imagine, if you participate and you be the one giving, even you, you will be satisfied. You will not be left hungry, isn't it? Like now, you are feeding on the spiritual food. Some of us will just hold it. We talk a hapa, you ni mambo ya arimathea. Unanza ezako, uko inje. Let this be part of your responsibility to go and spread the good news, isn't it? Isn't it? Yes. You will also get satisfied. Now, both Mark, Matthew and Mark drive home this point by providing a prelude, a prelude to the miracle. Um, in both Gospels, the feeding of the 5,000 5, is directly preceded by the story of Herod beheading John the Baptist. So there is this story of Jesus feeding 5,000, but the, before that, there's another one where John the Baptist is beheaded. What's the connection here? Let's look at the connection. John is in prison um, for accusing Herod of adultery with Herodias, his brother's wife. So, and so Herodias is not happy, isn't it? Isn't it? Herod throws a feast for his birthday, inviting, and there's no connection between John the Baptist prison, 
being in prison and this birthday. This is an independent event, uh, if, 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 if we can use that language. So he, in, he, he throws a party, a birthday party, and he invites his friends, the, the who is who in society. Those are his friends. He invites those friends. So you come in at the gate and, what's your name? If you say you are Agisa, oh, what is Agisa? I've never heard of that. Just go, go aside, go aside. Oh, another one is coming. Oh, oh, I'm the son of Rigiji. That one will go in very, very fast, isn't it? Isn't it? I, I don't mean this. I'm just giving it as an example. The who is who? It's a private gala. It is exclusive party. But do you know what? When Herodias danced, I mean, uh, daughter danced before Herod at the feast and it pleased him. What did Herod say? Tell me what you want. I will give it to you. Influence of the mother. What did he what did she say? Is the mother who influenced? I'm not against mothers, no. But it's the mother who influenced, isn't it? Isn't it? Because she ran back to the mother. If you see the video, me have seen the video. She ran back to the mother and asked the mother, hey, now he has said anything. Then the mother said, and I will go and say, John the Baptist's head. With all fairness. What was this daughter going to do with John the Baptist's head? Was, was there anything she was going to do with John the Baptist's head? There was nothing. But that is not the story for today. The story for today is, so John the Baptist's head had to be brought. What, I, what do I want to say? Herod's party, Herod's party, exclusive private gala for the rich and powerful, the who and who, but leads to death. Did it lead to death? Did it lead to death? What about Jesus feeding the 5,000? It's also a party. It's a feast. It did not start as a party, as a feast, but it ended up being a feast until there were leftovers, isn't it? Everyone satisfied. It was inclusive. Because it says, come to me, all of you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest, isn't it? It's come to me all. Not private. Not just a few. Mm -mm. All. Come to me, all of you. That is Jesus' party. Inclusive. It is for everyone. How did it end up? Everyone got bread. Kweli? Kweli? Everyone was joyous. Going home very happy. Is it true? And it led to life. Life in abundance. Praise God. Jesus' party, inclusive for all. It gives bread, joy, and life. Herod's party, exclusive private gala for only the very few. It leads to death. Now ask somebody, which party would you attend? You have those two choices. Which party? Do you want to attend Herod's party or do you want to attend Jesus' party? Jesus' party is a community picnic. It's a community picnic. He says, come, all of you. Come. Those who are hungry, come. And you will get satisfied. You are thirsty, come. And you, your thirst will be quenched. Herod's party, you go, you live more thirsty, more hungry, with a lot of hangover. Which party will you attend? No, 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 ask somebody. Which party would you want to attend? Jesus' party or Herod's party? You know the hangover is not even what you are thinking. The hangover can even be, you know, you still want to hang over with your friends. That, that is also hangover, isn't it? Praise God. 
Now, Herod's party, listen, when you are coming in, you asked, who are you? Who are you? Oh, how come I, I've never heard of, of such? What do you do? But Jesus' party says, when, when you are coming in, he says, I knew you before you were born. Why don't we clap for Jesus? That is Jesus' party. I want to invite you to come to Jesus' party. There is party tonight. Hallelujah. It's Jesus' party. But do you know what? Some of us may be in Herod's party without knowing. We may be in Herod's party without knowing. So find out which part. You may be thinking you are in Jesus' party. Kube, you are in Herod's. Let's go to Jesus' party. Because it's a party that will leave us satisfied because he gives bread, he gives joy, and he gives eternal life. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.